Today I'd figure I'd show off my new portable PC that I just made. Basically this thing is awesome for gaming, video editing, whatever. It's honestly the best way of doing any of this. I mean check it out, I'm playing Overwatch. Like this thing is awesome. Just try to do better than this. Um, maybe it's the best? Hey guys, this is Zach with Next Tech News, and today we're going to be making a portable desktop for both video editing and a little bit of gaming. Basically, the idea is to make it as portable as possible, so let's take a look at the specs. First, we have the MSI GTX 1060 6GB edition. Um, we have Corsair DDR4, um, Vengeance LED, and it's the red LED because this is going to be the first red and black theme build on this channel. We also have the ASUS Z170i, which is mini ITX motherboard that we used in the do-it-yourself all-in-one build. We have an SFX power supply, 500 watts. We have a C7 cooler, an i7-7700K, and then for storage we have the 850 EVO M.2 SSD and a Kingston 480GB SSD. Then over here we have the RII um, little mini keyboard, we have the G-Chick 15.6 Full HD um, monitor, it's just a little portable one. We have some Velcro for some reasons you'll see eventually. And then we have the Silverstone MLH08, I believe, um, case, which has a built-in handle and everything. So this should come out really well. We'll see how it all comes together, and let's get started on the build.
So starting off with the motherboard, I know a lot of people are going to ask me why I used a Z170 motherboard with a Kaby Lake processor, but the main reason I used it is because right now there aren't a lot of Z270 mini ITX motherboards available. Most of them are either on their way or haven't even been made yet. And two, the only real big difference between the Z270 platform and the Z170 platform is just that the Z270 has 24 PCIe lanes and the Z170 only has 20 PCIe lanes. And I honestly didn't need that many PCIe lanes for this build. So might as well go with what's readily available, which is the Z170 Mini ITX motherboards. So I'm sure a couple of you are wondering why I chose this g chick monitor over the ASUS one in my past review video, and the reason is actually quite simple. I originally bought the ASUS monitor for this build, but I realized it wouldn't work when it only can plug in to a USB port. I wasn't thinking about it at the time, but I needed it to be able to plug in to the GPU, and that monitor did not have that ability. So I looked around on the internet and found that g chick makes a bunch of portable monitors that are powered off of USB, but you can also plug an HDMI into it to actually display. So I have the HDMI running from the GTX 1060 that displays on this monitor, and they work perfectly. They have a bunch of different monitors out there. Some are touchscreen, some are like this one where they're not touchscreen, but I definitely recommend their monitors. I have been very pleased so far with this one. Is this the easiest way of making a portable computer? Probably not. There are plenty of great laptop options that do have dedicated GPUs. Um, for example, the Razer Blade Pro series is a very good one, um, and there are countless other ones out there. However, I really wanted just to make a desktop and see how portable I could actually make it and honestly I'm going to try for a while of using this as my portable computer to see how difficult it is. Obviously there is a weight difference between this and a laptop, but is there a big difference in power as far as the render times and all that kind of stuff for video editing? Only time will tell, but we will find out on this channel. So essentially there's two things besides the computer itself that make this build possible. And that is this keyboard, which is a small wireless keyboard that has a trackpad built in, which makes it easy both to Velcro to the side of it, obviously, like you saw in the video. And it's easy because I can easily manipulate it, whether I'm holding it like this or if I have it actually like on a desk. Um, it's just a portable keyboard that works really well and has a really good construction. It is made out of metal and everything, which is why I chose this one. And the other thing that makes this build possible, which is probably the most interesting, is this battery right here. It's the Suwauki battery. It's a 20,000 milliamp hour battery, and it puts out 200 watts, which is the most important thing. If you go out and calculate how many watts this build actually uses, maxed out on everything, it's gonna use about 250 watts, which obviously is more than this battery can put out. However, 250 watts is not what this is going to be doing in a gaming scenario or video editing, editing scenario. Most of the time, this is going to be under 200 watts. So it won't be an issue. The battery should work most of the time. I'm going to test this by actually using this as my daily driver computer for a little bit to see how this battery performs. And I'll do a video standalone on the battery itself. So definitely stay tuned for that. If I were to build this build again, I would definitely try to see if I can find a case that's a little bit smaller than this one and probably use like an HD Plex power supply. Obviously with an SFX power supply that definitely makes the case have to be a little bit bigger than it could be if all that was in there was like the motherboard and the graphics card itself. Um, obviously I could have gone with like a mini graphics card then if I was really trying to shrink down this build. But the thing that most attracted me to this case in particular was the handle on the top because it made it really portable. And it ended up working out because it's literally the same dimensions as this monitor. So Velcroing the monitor to this case was pretty perfect. And as you saw in the very opening sequence, I have this um, monitor set up where it can lean forward and I can have this all on my lap, basically like a laptop style. I really do think this one turned out well. But I think next time I do this, which I definitely will do a part two of this video way down the road, um, I will definitely try to make it even smaller. And 
hopefully technology has helped me at that point by shrinking things down a little bit more as well. So we'll see. I hope you guys liked this video. This is Zach with Next Tech News. See ya!